Greetings, travel enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of Travelpreneur. I'm your host, Mega McSwain. Today, we have a distinguished guest with us, Todd Wynn Perry, the Managing Director of Harwa HTL, a global leader in hospitality consulting. Hello, Todd. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Mega. Great to be here. Thank you. Todd, Hormath HTL is renowned globally for its specialized consulting services in the hospitality industry. Can you elaborate on the unique value that the company brings to its clients and how your team's international experience combined with expert local knowledge sets you apart from other consulting firms? I think that's it. You just kind of said it, actually. We've got uh, 58 offices around the globe, and all of the consultants are specifically dedicated to the hotel, travel, tourism, leisure market, and sectors of the industries in their respective countries. They're all experienced in market feasibility studies, the legal, the accounting, all of the aspects of hotel development and hotel operation. And they're also members of that community. So they're involved with the local tourism associations, the national tourism authorities. And we all work together because we're always having clients that are from one country doing business in another country. And so it's a great network. And again, very focused on this particular sector of the industry. That's a lot of coverage. I mean, around the globe. When did the company launch? The original company was Horwath and Horwath International. It had been around for over 100 years. And in the U.S., there was a company called Laventhal and Horwath. And in the 80s, uh, prior to the 90s, there was always the big eight accounting firms. And Laventhal and Horwath was number nine. And they were the accountants to the Waldorf Astoria in New York since about 1920. In the 80s, all the accounting firms started to move towards having an adjacent consulting practice. So Arthur Anderson did management, Pricewaterhouse, I think, did technology. And because Labathon and Horath had always been working with hotels as one of their major client bases, it was obvious that they would move into consulting to the hotel industry, which they did. Anyway, over time, that's evolved. Once was the company called Horwath and Horwath International or Labathon and Horwath here in the U.S. morphed to become Horwath HDL, and that's the global enterprise. And with a focus solely on hotel tourism and leisure consulting, how do you provide comprehensive solutions that cover every aspect of hotel real estate, tourism, leisure development? What are some of those comprehensive solutions? Sure. So in the case of undeveloped or, or developing world, we did do a lot of work. We have done a lot of work and still do a lot of work with, the again, the travel associations, the national tourism organizations and setting up how they're going to do their tourism. And when I was in living in Hong Kong and Singapore, we did work around growth in Bali and how to manage that growth in tourism there. We did uh, work for the Singapore government on an island called Bintan Island. And it was really sort of providing a professional approach to research and analysis and then advice around growth using other examples from around the world and current comparable situations. In the more developed world, it's a little different. We end up being more involved in the hotel sector where we're providing really from A to Z, all the way from early development, feasibility studies, site analysis, looking at how a hotel could be successful in a particular location, identifying its comp set, and really projecting out and valuing that project or that hotel before it's even built. And then as the hotel is operating, providing asset management work. I just finished off of a repositioning on a property in, in Palm Springs where the property had sort of suffered uh, with new product coming up right around it and it hadn't put enough capital expense into the physical asset. So what was the next dollar of CapEx that should be spent to move that property up in its competitive set and penetrate that market better? And so, and then that could eventually move on to an asset management role where we're monitoring the manager and we're monitoring the asset and what CapEx is going into that property long-term. You know, that brings me to the next question. The hospitality industry is continually evolving. It's hard to keep up. There's so much technology. Social media has completely changed things. In your experience, what are some of the current trends shaping the global hospitality landscape? And how does Horwath HTL stay at the forefront of these trends? In grad school, my thesis was the evolution of the hotel industry because it went from when I was a kid in the 70s and in early 80s, the CEOs of all the major hotel companies were really out of the food and beverage area. You sort of graduated from Lucerne and, or, or Cornell and you became a great you know, chef or you became a great food and beverage manager or, or just a general operations manager. And then you evolved up to be these great CEOs of the big companies. By the time the 80s came around and people started segmenting, if you were a hotel company, you needed to have something in the economy sector, something in the select service sector, extended stay, 
three star, four star, five star luxury resort, you started having a whole breadth of brands working in different niches. Simultaneously came a change in who the CEOs were. They started coming out of the retail sector, people who dealt with multiple brands and different niches. And how do you work with that? And what's the next niche that we need to fill? That sort of has formed where we are currently with the bigger hotel companies anyway, constantly trying to fill different niches. That's why you have Marriott with 38 brands and Hyatt with 28 brands. And, you know, they all have these different brands. It's like, who, what is a Hyatt? We don't know because there's so many different iterations of that company. And that is not really changing. They still keep Mm -hmm. adding brands. In fact, I just saw a couple of new ones come out today. The state of play right now is that these companies are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, You saw Wyndham (laughs) potentially being purchased by choice or, or vice versa, which would be a huge consolidation. I think that will continue to happen. But luckily, between the millennials and Gen Z, they've really pushed hotels. In the early days, it was independent lifestyle boutique (laughs) hotels that were really appealing to the millennials that didn't want to stay in a property that looked like every other place in the world, in every other city. They wanted something different and unique. Yeah. And so then you saw the rise of of Thompson Hotels, which I worked on, and W Hotels, and Ace Hotels, Huxton, a number of brands started emerging that really appealed to a design sense, but also a a different service approach, being served by people that kind of look and act in our of your genre, and not working off a standard operating procedure. Eventually, all the big companies bought all those brands. So we'll see how they do moving forward. But the millennials are now having kids and I think their needs are a little different and everybody's working from home or remotely. And so we're seeing differences in travel trends where in the old days there was pleasure, right? Business and leisure and people would stay Friday and Saturday night. Then they maybe kick on and stay Saturday and Sunday night or or Friday night and Saturday night. And we're seeing a decline in that because people are, they don't want to travel. They want to be home. They want to do their things at home and business is business. And and they will go on Monday (coughs) or Tuesday and they'll be back on on Wednesday or Thursday. And the business and the leisure part isn't quite blending so much anymore because people want to go and do the things they want to do, not necessarily in that place. So I think that's a change. And the one constant, this is why I've pivoted my career to the, the outdoor sector, is that people want to be outside more and they want to be more in touch with nature. They want to do different things. They don't be stuck on a golf course. If they're going to go outside, they want to hike or bike or ski or do something differently outside. And they want to live near that. And they want to, when they go on their vacation, they want to be in that environment so they can do those activities. So I think that's the big change. And who knows about Gen Z yet? We, we haven't really figured them out, but I'm sure they're going to follow in that trend of really wanting to get back and involved in something that is closer to nature and not an urban environment. This episode is brought to you by travelpayments.com. Travel businesses have unique needs when it comes to credit card processing. From large average ticket sizes and tolerance for higher chargeback ratios to simple integrations with the most popular shopping cart systems, the travel industry specialists at travelpayments.com have you covered. Unfortunately, many of the most popular credit card processors initially accept travel businesses, but without warning, freeze their merchant accounts and the thousands of dollars in them because these service providers don't understand or support the unique needs of travel industry business. Don't get stuck with one of the big guys who will freeze you out without a moment's notice. Instead, work with a travel industry specialist who will support your business every step of the way. Visit travelpayments.com to get a free quote today. As the managing director, how do you foster a culture of innovation within the company, encouraging your team to continuously seek these new solutions and approaches? My case is a little unique. Several of our consultants are doing some outdoor (laughs) hospitality work. Uh, around the globe. I'm just working on a project with my counterpart in Greece, and I'm advising along with my counterparts in Australia on, in this sector. So kind of everything I do is innovative because no one's really consulted in the sector before. It's a lot of new learnings about how to value a project that is in the outdoor hotel industry, how to predict its cash flow, how to position the property correctly and get the occupancy and the ADR right and make sure that you're building the facilities that the demand wants. Most of the projects I'm working on, there isn't a competitive property in the area. There's nothing that really is similar. You know, if you've got a bunch of tents or your <laughs> airstreams or tiny houses on the side of a hill, you know, there's nothing in a 60 mile radius that's even any, anywhere similar to that. So we've had to go back to the old style of how we used to do feasibility work by talking with general managers and operators and sales managers in a marketplace to figure out what's 
happening in that market? What, what are the dynamics? Where's the labor force coming from? How much are they getting paid? What, what are they willing to work for? What's the seasonality? How does that work? Right. That becomes almost more important than what the room rate is because we, right. we need to fill those soft periods. So we end up kind of going back to the old school way of, of <coughs> figuring out these businesses and how they'll, they'll be successful. What's your vision for what they detail in the coming years? How do you further solidify its position as this preeminent specialist in hotel, tourism, leisure, consulting, contributing to the growth and development of the industry on a global scale? It's always been our mission to be that, that guiding force and that one of very few professional companies that cover the globe focused on this industry. I think moving forward, our uh, global chairman is a guy named John Fareed, based here in the U.S., and he's added, I think, seven or eight new offices just in a short period of time here, really trying to establish the brand in places where we're not already. Uh, Central and South America, we've got presence, but we could certainly do more in the Caribbean as well. We've got some, but we could do more. And then Middle East and Africa is kind of another area where I think our professional approach to hospitality will help the, these burgeoning economies. And if you look at Saudi Arabia, who's sort of seeing oil as a finite thing, as opposed to a never ending thing as if turned to tourism. And so we're right there trying to help them out in that process as well. And how does Horwath HTL sort of embrace innovation and leverage emerging technologies, if at all? In terms of my sector, technology has been huge in that because of technology, people can work remotely as we're looking at properties and we're developing facilities recommendations for properties. You need to make community workspace. People mm-hmm. want to work together alone. They don't just want to be stuck in their room. That's all based on technology. The fact that somebody might go on vacation, spend the weekend someplace and go, you know what? I really, I don't actually have to get back to the city. Why am I going back home? I'll add on another couple of nights. I can do my work here, work remotely. So that's great. That is creating kind of another demand segment, which is that digital nomad. And then for us, we're very happy the technology is there because when we do come to a market that maybe SDR, no one's contributing to SDR in that marketplace. What are we going to do? Well, we can go online and we can look at what everybody's doing and what they're charging through the various OTAs or their own property website, and we can figure out exactly where the pricing is going to be moving forward, month by month, weekend, weekday, all that stuff. We use technology a lot, and it's changed the way we're able to work, and it's sort of made our work more accurate and all the information more accessible, that's for sure. As a seasoned professional in the hospitality consulting sector, what advice would you offer to aspiring consultants or industry professionals looking to make a significant impact in the field, up-and-comers? Gen Xers like myself, we always say, just get off the phone, go do stuff. That's the first thing. The second thing I would say in terms of, you know, because I I look at resumes quite a bit. For me, internships are great and that's fine. And I appreciate that. But I really look for people that have worked in the sector, really, you know, it might not have a full time, maybe 10 or 20 hours during while they're going to university or school, or maybe through a summer somewhere, but really worked at a front desk, waited on a table, did all of those things that make our business, the service aspect of our business, you know, really doing hospitality. That's what I like. And that's me me in particular. But when I look at a resume, I want to see somebody that actually did the work that this industry is all about. I mean, hospitality is a labor intensive industry. Hotel Mm -hmm. management, it's all about managing people, your employees, as well as your guests and your owners. But having that ability to interact with people, to provide service, to have the heart of an innkeeper and like serve people and like to do those things, but really actually having done it, not just studied it from the outside, but actually been in the trenches and done the work and then be a student of it obviously is great. Anyway, that's my advice is go get a job and, you know, time to slow down. If you really are interested in consulting in this particular sector anyway, go, go do a ski season. You got time, take a ski season, work it, work in the, work the lifts or work in a restaurant or work in a hotel and see Mm -hmm. what it's like to do a ski season or do a summer season on Nantucket or or Martha's Vineyard or whatever. I mean, those people love to have college kids come and and work the season. You might not have great accommodation. You might not have a normal summertime or or winter time, but the memories will last forever. And the experience Mm -hmm. is directly, you know, applicable to this work that I do. It's so interesting you say that because in all the shows we've done, so many people have said it comes down to hospitality at the end of the day. It's still a people business. I mean, it's if you can have all the technology, you can have all the social media, you can sit behind a desk and do all of this. But at the end of the day, you have to be able to 
have this thing inside you being hospitable. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. The other thing I would add to that is, you know, I've worked with a lot of great developers in the sector. They all have one common trait, all the, the best developers. I work for bad developers and I work for good developers, <laughs> but all the best developers that I've worked with and known through the years, one common trait, and that is a very fastidious attention to detail. I'm not a great developer. <laughs> and maybe that's because I don't have that particular trait, but they are involved in everything. And then from a general manager or CEO perspective, I've worked with a lot of them and the great ones in that role, they all have one common trait. And that common trait is they can speak to the dishwasher, the room attendant, and the $100 million investor, all mm -hmm. with the same aplomb, right. with the same right. level of respect for the other person all the way up the chain. So I think when you work in hospitality and you're working with the dishwashers and the cooks and the housekeepers and whoever else might be in there, you realize that you got to be a little humble, but for the grace of God, you might be doing that same work and with pride. So I think for a lot of the college kids and the kids when I get into this sector, take a bite of humble pie, go and do the work with everybody at all different levels. Yeah. Todd, thank you so much for sharing your insight with us and for taking the time today. Let our listeners know where they can get in touch with you and where they can learn more about your company. Sure. So you can get a hold of me on either my website, which would be horwethhtl.com. And there's a sector under services and I'm in outdoor advisory services is on the, the drop down. And you can contact me at T, oh, I'm on LinkedIn, Todd Wynn Perfect. Kind of a unique name, <laughs> for sure. Well, great. Thank you so much. To our listeners, please follow and subscribe for more episodes of Travelpreneur. And Todd, we look forward to speaking to you again and just keeping up with Horwath HTL. Okay, great. Thank you, Maya. Appreciate it. Thank you.